So then we'll move on uh, to our second report, uh, Finance and Administration, Mr. Sloss. Um, good, morning, good morning, everybody. Uh, the Finance and Administration Committee met on February 6th of uh, this year, 10.30 a.m. Committee members present were Directors Guzman, Johnson, and myself. We had four, <clears throat> four items uh, presented for final acceptance, which were accepted by the committee which are on your agenda. Four amendments and change orders were also approved. Uh, the CFO, Ms. Downs, gave an update on the financial status of the Sewage and Water Board. Um, and Ms. Downs stressed that the financial results through December are preliminary and will be finalized at the audit. Um, she reported that an upgrade to the billing system will commence in February, and that will enhance the billing system substantially. Additionally, the backlog of transfer accounts, which you all are likely very aware of, which was in the thousands, uh, she, she informed me today that that is down to less than 100. Um, Ms. Downs also reported that the day's cash on hand as of December 31, 2018, as per required by our bond covenants, both of those were met, substantially over met, uh, which generated some press in, a few, in the several days after that. There being no executive session uh, and no further business, we were adjourned at 1043. And that's my report. And I had a couple of questions after, if that's all right. Uh, sure, minute. absolutely. Um, the day's cash on hand at the end of the year is uh, a measure of cash on hand. It's required. I'm not going to comment on that. But it's been uh, reported and, and uh, that we uh, we owe drainage and sewer, or will owe drainage and sewer funds, excuse me, drainage will owe sewer and water funds, that if we, if we settle that intercompany debt, we're going to run out of cash somehow in the mid-year <clears throat> mid time frame, June or so time frame. If we don't, if we continue to owe sewer and water, by that when I say, I keep saying we, drainage, owe sewer and water, <clears throat> we're going to run out of cash sometime in the September, October time frame, the height of hurricane season. First of all, I'd like to know, for the record, if that is in fact true, please, and uh, it's an in inquisition, but I think people need to know specifically that this is, I believe, to be a very serious issue. So, no, Thank you for, for the question. I think it's important to highlight the reality of our situation. So specific to drainage, it's very simple to explain. We have 56 million, give or take, money, source of revenue through millage that we bring every year. We know for a fact we spend 56 million on o &M every year, routine. No surprises, just, just to business as usual. So if we, I walk into 2019 owing $35 million, it's a combination of what I owe vendors and what I owe sewer and water. So if I pay the 35 million out of the 56, I'm left with less than almost 20 million bucks to, uh, to carry me through the year. So if you do the math, if I need 56, I only have 20, I will run out of cash. And it's just a matter of how soon do we pay back the debt to, we have to pay the vendors. Because mm -hmm. if we don't pay vendors, they're gonna walk away, we're just gonna have a bad reputation, we can't operate. So that's, that's essential. How much do we pay back sewers and water and then how soon, how much? That's a variable, but I mean, we, we owe it to each component of the utility to make them whole the best we can. So walking into a year with less than a third of what you need tells you that you're going to run out of cash. Which is, as I expected, dire. Right. And um, I, I know that the answer is not fully known at this point, but what's, what, what's our plan? Uh, to raise money. I mean, obviously, we are turning every stone. We're looking at every possible potential source of funding, whether it's the state, whether it's the federal, federal government. We've, we've submitted applica applications to, again, any possible likely source of funding that, could, that, uh, that is aligned with our purpose and likely to give us some money. But at the end of the day, I do not believe that is going to be sufficient to allow us to not run out of cash by the end of the year. That's why I think the mayor has been so front and center, very, if I may use the word, aggressively pursuing 
any other non-traditional source of funding because she sees the box, she knows exactly where we are and where we're heading. I mean, I mean, it means no, it's imperative, it's I mean. imperative. And many of you, I'm sure all of you have just seen uh, the real push for additional revenue, uh, pretty much what's already been generated in the city of New Orleans. I did request in writing to uh, our governor uh, for a working group, a task force, uh, that in 30 days uh, come up with, based on all options, uh, a path forward in terms of uh, getting some upfront uh, dollars, particularly from the uh, convention center, but also um, pushing for recurring. This is not a, a, a one-time deal. We need upfront and we also need recurring. That is, that's just where we are. Um, the task force has been uh, created upon receiving that letter uh, from me. The governor acted in haste. Um, we put it together, a small working group. I know Ramsey uh, serves on that working group as well. He's been active. Uh, we've had several meetings. Uh, and um, I'm, 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 I'm confident uh, that the uh, state leadership understands um, the seriousness of this situation and can no longer uh, kind of shy away from it. And so we will continue uh, to meet uh, and hopefully come up with a path forward as relates to not only one time, but also looking at recurring. Ramsey, you've been front and center on this. If you uh, have any comments you want to share at this time. Uh, <clears throat> pardon me. Sure thing, Mayor. One, one thing that, um, you know, we, we had one meeting of the working group, and then we had a subsequent sort of staff team meeting between the, the state folks, um, Gassam, Bob, and, and Yvette, and um, our PDU team of just looking at what is, what is grant money that the state administers that Sewage and Water Board can turn to. And the reality on that is it's not, there's not much there, mm -hmm. but our, we have an obligation to figure out what, where that is and what it is. And so we, we have a follow-up, I think, very soon to, to show them that. But I would say just in particular, the Governor's Office of Homeland Security and the State Division of Administration have been incredibly helpful in saying, okay, what can we do with what we have already? Okay, now let's look at that, and then we'll go to what would be new in order to help turn this entity around. And they recognize the seriousness of it, particularly now, prior to the start of hurricane season. Absolutely, and, and I have to say that uh, February 13th, uh, breakage, again, you know, we don't plan these things, they happen, and they can happen at any time, but it only uh, reflects the seriousness of the situation that we are in. And I do uh, commend uh, Governor John Bell Edwards uh, and his commitment to help us move things along. And so my staff is going to Baton Rouge every single week, uh, whatever it takes you know, to work through this, uh, we will do. Uh, but um, it's, it's very serious. And I just, I'm gonna continue uh, to push um, at, every, at every single level. It's just that important. And I'm thankful to you and to Ramsey for all the efforts that you're putting forward. So, if I can just add to it, because you said some really important things there that, as Gassan said, out of the 56, 57 million or so that we get a year, that's operational. There's nothing that comes in for capital. So as you said, this is not, it can't be one time. We need the one time right now, but we have to look for more sustainable ongoing um, sources for drainage. Absolutely, and the reality is too, you hey, hate. Our reserves have been spent. Reserves we walked in here, all the money gone. Yeah. Beyond 85 that. million. Beyond that. Beyond. Yeah. That's the reserve. It's gone. You know, and so um, it is what it is, but we are committed to solutions, and it's going to take, you know, a, a, a joint effort uh, and a win win that I am looking for, uh, but um, we do need the upfront today and we also need reoccurring. So we'll continue on that path and we'll keep the board abreast. I think it's important to note, uh, you know, there was this confusion, if I may call it that, that we found money. Oh yeah. Uh, that money was not found. The fund money has always been there. Um, and how this works on day to day, we're paying vendors, we're paying, we're, we're using either, um, cash on hand, we're using o and dollars, we're using bond revenue, whatever the case may be, we're, we're keeping things moving. When we get reimbursement from FEMA, 
that money is supposed to pay back all the sources that fronted the dollars. Mm -hmm. And it takes time. Unfortunately, we don't have a robust system that tells us where the money came from without a lot of, without really significant effort. So it took us a while to decipher what we need to pay back and make, I mean, that's the kosher thing to do and we gotta make everybody whole. That was happening in the midst of us producing a kafir that was many, many months behind. And when Yvette came in, she inherited a, not just late, just a, an effort that had not begun that should have been done by then. So she was already a month behind the, the due date and she accomplished what, I mean, that was a heroic effort on her, effort, on her part <coughs> and her staff and then all the, the partners that helped to get us uh, in end of November where we submitted the CAFR. But that's when we freed up the resources that she had to start working on finding where the money should go and again, putting it where it belongs. So it was never misallocated or right. hidden or anything like that. It was just an accounting exercise that needed to happen with the same people who are busy doing something else. That's just and, the reality. And if it needed to go, because the account that it is deposited <coughs> in is a restricted account, but some of it, most of it, we were able to, as with that research you mentioned, we were able to um, move into the right places with the research. But some of it is still in that account, sure. and it is restricted for specific uses. I, I want to be clear that it wasn't, it is a restricted account. We didn't change it from restricted, unrestricted. We did we all, we did move the funds and reallocate some of the funds as the research de de um, dictated. Well, and I can say that this level of research uh, has been dictated across not only Sewage and Water Board but the City of New Orleans as it relates to our administration, and uh, we are seeing some of the same signs on the administration side of things, but we are taking the deeper dives necessary under this leadership, under this administration, uh, so that we are as, as transparent as possible, but we're able to show the public that, you know, we're doing our due diligence, and as we do our due diligence, we will find whether larger gaps than we anticipated, uh, and, and, and it's okay because that's what it's going to take for us to have a better understanding of our utility and of city government uh, so that we can use our money wisely, be more efficient uh, and, and accountable. So thank you and we'll continue. On that path, Poco I know, thank you. and the thank councilman. You. I realize that you didn't find it, but could you not go find some more? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Well, at, we, at, uh, continue to, to examine um, what have been past practices and, and to ask questions of what is a practice versus what is a legal requirement. Sometimes it's a legal requirement, but I have to ask those questions. And it might unturn some things that allow us to, um, to change some of those practices, which is what happened. But it was a, it was a one time, I mean, reimbursements from FEMA are it's a one-time shot. It's not an ongoing situation. And the things that are ongoing, we've already planned that into the capital program for those, for those particular um, activities so on the capital side uh, for any FEMA reimbursements. However, that is why we're going after, um, you, you, you all approved some resolutions in December for us to apply for EPA loan funds from, from a couple of different state agencies. We've started that process and we're there's two pre-applications in, and we're working on getting some others in. Um, we have a, you approved a bond resolution where, for the drainage. We are working with uh, mm -hmm. a Board of Liquidation to get on their agenda to try to move some of that forward as best we can. There are some challenges in that um, because, because of some of the very things we've talked about with um, the, the, <laughs> the drainage uh, sufficiency of you know, the, what funds we have coming in versus our needs. So we have to make sure that we can, if we issue bonds, that we can pay it out long term. Mm -hmm. um, so we're looking at all of that and working with Board of Liquidation on that. And I think that we just need to be very diligent in making sure that the public understands that this administration is holistically committed to making sure that their dollars are spent the way they're supposed to. Absolutely. Obviously, we've gotten a situation where we've had some things that didn't happen the way they should have. Mm -hmm. There are going to be other bumps in the road, and I've been beat up about where you go find millions of dollars. Well, the fact is, is that 
it's better that it was located, reallocated or whatever it was, rather than where it was. And this administration has taken all of the steps necessary so that we can get some more findings or whatever the right term is, so that the public can have a comfort that we are doing what we're supposed to do as it relates to their money. Exactly. And I, and I also want to, um, again, note the efforts that some of that isn't always finding <laughs> finding money, or, but it's also efficiencies in some right. of the things that we're looking at long term. Might take some up front initial investment, but the long term efficiencies will help slow that growth. And the improved infrastructure in terms of the system. Mm -hmm. um, because, services. no, it, it, absolutely. And what I found, I call it a, a when you look at the back of the magazine and the, on the airplane, and it shows you all the lines, you know, where the air, air the, the planes are going. Mm -hmm. Sometimes these systems, they were not ran efficiently. Right, right. And we've had to, as a result of that, even turn a return FEMA money because we didn't use it right. And so, and I'm not just speaking on this, I'm not really not on this end, I'm saying on the administration side of things. So it's very important right. to get this done right. And I do want to commend the councilmen. Uh, when we were uh, in DC, you know, we made sure that we made our rounds uh, to our federal partners, leadership, the uh, Department of Transportation, uh, where he even asked, because we want to explore the EPA grant, the WIFIA. That's that Water Infrastructure Finance Investment Act under this current administration. Okay. Our uh, letter of interest, I believe, is due what? November, August. It's November. August. It was November in 17, but it's August. And so we're going to be working, you know, with you all, mm -hmm. uh, but also looking at other sources of revenue by, you know, being creative. And just thank you, Councilman, because that was, I know, one of uh, your initiatives uh, that you brought forth. Okay. Lewis, you seem like you I had, had a question, on it, and I feel like I'm going backwards a little bit, but I want to make sure I understand the 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 35 million is a it's an intercompany debt basically. Well, 28 of that is is intercompany. The others were for outside vendors. Okay, so so if we if we if the drainage, you know, it's, it's sewer water drainage. If drainage paid back the other two and en internal entities. Um, it would be short of cash, but now that we have the drainage side has the money, is the are the other two? <laughs> short Wait, of that cash? money is still coming in. Okay. Um, got, very little has come in on the millages for this year yet. Yeah. So, um, so every time we're paying a drainage bill, it's it's a borrowing kind of situation. Um, but so your your question actually is what? I'm trying to figure out if if by by one internal group borrow money from another internal group if if the the like one, the water goes, side yeah. is now oh, short money. Oh, there's definitely a ripple effect. It's, it's one goes absolutely. up. Sort of a, a what do they call it, a whack-a-mole kind of problem. <laughs> it, it, it just keeps going. It just shifts across absolute absolutely. departments. Okay. Absolutely. I just wanted to make sure I understood that. Thank you, Coco. I know you said yes, several. I'm I'm almost finished here. Okay. One, one one of the questions I had, which I don't know that there's an answer to, so it's something to contemplate. I think is what happens if we can't raise the money, and I think that is the, you know metaphorically the China syndrome for us, and so. <coughs> Rather than talk about that, I do want to emphasize what Madam Mayor said. Rev. Tallis on the HR 193 committee that Councilman Banks and, and Ramsey Green and I served on, their recommendation right now is we're $50 million a year short in drainage right now. Mm -hmm. And so th that, that speaks to we do have to have an ongoing solution. And then I think, because uh, you had some slides to show what, what's important to us yeah, to I mean, spend I, money on right I now. I just wanted to, to <coughs> emphasize why not only will run out of cash if, if folks can um, I just put a, put a list of projects starting with that immediate need that the $35 million uh, debt basically that we walked in on 2019. The SELA payment which is due uh, this year, that was not accounted for, that was not budgeted for, That that is money that we need to find so we can and make a payment. That goes up to 11 million. That, that's, a, that's a small number in comparison with the uh, 2020. And, uh, it's, it, it ramps up to uh, almost 10 to $11 million for, for 30 years. So it's a significant obligation that we are facing with, again, if we're at fi balance 56 versus 56 coming in, that eleven dollars, eleven million dollars, have to be identified. The set source has to be created sooner or later. It's an obligation that we have, we cannot walk away from. Um, 
I mean, yeah, that's that's specific to drain, but then there are other projects that we uh, that is ongoing where you have whether it's JRRR or just paving projects where the city has the ability to pave and restore the pavement, but we have no ability to fund uh, the replacement of a sewer or a water main underneath. And you know how horrible that scenario would look like when you're done paving, I come in to fix a water main break and bust out brand new pavement. I just, it's just a bad sequence that is unavoidable unless I have money. I mean, it's just, it's, it, it's something we're facing. Uh, it's a reality. Um, the frequency changer uh, or converter to me is a must because again, we cannot get away from steam, you know, because of the cost effectiveness uh, reason, but also from a, the cross uh, connection uh, situation that we talked about last special meeting. I mean, there are a lot of reasons for us to, to invest in that and we don't have the money for it. And then, then you're stuck. You're stuck in doing business as usual, which is not what we want to be. Um, and then there are significant things that we need to do in terms of power. I know there's a conversation, public conversation re relative to energy, possibly bringing in some money to help us with these three uh, efforts, but as you, as if you do the math, that exceeds the amount that's being contemplated. I don't know what that is. I wouldn't want to sp speculate, but those are the, the, the immediate needs in terms of, for example, the fast bus transfer. If one that is implement, implemented or executed, any, any interruption or failure in the energy power line coming, power coming in, will become undetectable and then the, our pumps will not know that, right? And that's exactly the situation you wanna be in versus the current situation, if you lose power, the within a second, the pump knows and it shuts down. And when it shuts down, it's, it's a ripple effect of series of events that everything has to go perfectly, otherwise you, you're facing a more water advisory, which what we did back in November. It's just a reality. So turbine six, you know, it's a very expensive, very capable uh, turbine, but we can't use it when it's 45 degrees or less. So we, we, we need to harden it, make, make that usable every given day when we need it. <coughs> so, and then obviously if we, we wanna know where we're going, we need to start the effort of kind of as a utility with all these three components, water, sewer, and drainage, how do they interface and how do we become a utility that we need to be, but that, that's a huge effort, that's two years effort and it's a costly effort. I don't have money for it. So I can't plan if I don't have money. And I can't tell you where I'm heading if I don't have a plan. So that's why I'm, I listed those just to kind of, it's a reality, it's not, it's not a wish list. That's right. It's a reality, that's those right. Are, the necessities, I mean, we have about $170 million capital plan for this year, I think that we're, this is just a part of. Right. Something right. like that. So. That's that's my report. Thank you very much for your indulgence to let me ask those questions. Uh, so I don't know if there's questions to ask. Well, yeah. Tough questions to answer. Yeah. We have another slide. That next uh, slide. The one is the history of okay. what we went through, which kind of came. Okay. It, it happened organically. <coughs> okay. Just out of curiosity, um, of the, I know we have the list of, of things that we'd want to start this year if we had the money. Mm -hmm. um, how much? If we started all of that this year, how much money would we have to have this year of that uh, $83 million? Well, the way we're doing business now, we're, if we are advertising a project mm -hmm. and we're giving an notice to proceed, mm -hmm. we want to have that money earmarked, encumbered. That's a new term for us. Encumbered, that means it sits Waiting. basically to be spent on that obligation. We okay. don't give a notice to proceed with a speculative scenario where well, we may have the money so we can pay you. That's why we are where we are. It's we true. can't pay vendors because the money was never set aside for that purpose. So we're changing how we do business. That's why I will not give a notice to proceed for any of this unless I have the money. Understood, that makes sense. And it gets us out of that, even was dealing with that on the administration side. Oh, we've been waiting on the city to put it out, notice to proceed. Well, you, have, you really need to develop a system to where you have those dollars encumbered yeah. so you can get things out. So what you say, you actually do. And we've been in this whole thing, you just say and then you don't do and then nothing happens. So we're just trying to change the culture.
Good. All right. So with that, we've had the finance report. You had anything else? I need to um, ask for a motion to approve or to accept. I said plenty. Thank okay. You. I need a motion to accept. I move. Second. Okay. Uh, moved by Mr. Sterling. Seconded by Dr. Duplessis. Any comments, questions? Hearing none, all in favor? Uh, any opposed, any abstentions? All right, so that uh, report has been approved. Thank you. We have some action.